Hey guys, this is Kevin for Pixavert.com. You are looking at a motherboard for the AM5 socket from AMD. Now the CPU obviously looks different to the AM4 ones, but take a look at the CPU cooler brackets. These guys here will probably look familiar if you've used an AM4 motherboard. And that's no coincidence. AMD have engineered the socket with the precision, with absolute precision to allow the use of AM4 CPU coolers. So yeah, if you wanna get a cooler for the AM5 socket, just use your AM4 CPU cooler. Okay, thanks for watching. See you later. Okay, not so fast. Now there are some other considerations uh, about the increased TDP and we are also going to have some updates on AM5 memory and one of those updates is going to be quite important so keep watching until the end. Now before we get going, if like me you have at some stage mislaid the back plates or the back panels for your AM4 socket when you are installing a CPU cooler, you could replace it with one of these from Amazon. I'll have a link to the search page for these on Amazon. These may be very useful if you intend on selling your AM4 motherboard to someone and you wanna make sure it's complete when, when you sell it. Now, one of the big changes with the AM5 motherboard, with the AM5 series, 7000 series, is that AMD will not be shipping any coolers uh, with these CPUs inside of the box. You are going to have to purchase your own cooler and I would recommend you get that ready even before you purchase the the, the other equipment because otherwise you're not going to be able to use uh, the, the CPU. So let's take a look at some recommendations. My first recommendation is this MSI Core Liquid 360 millimeter cooler. Now these guys, the Core liquid coolers, they will go with any of the new Ryzen CPUs up to and including the 7950X. They have similar performance to the best on the market in terms of temperatures and in terms of also of acoustics. And it's not bad at all at the price at the price range, about $120 to $130. And if you cast them at the right time, you can get them maybe closer to about $100. Now there's typically about a three year warranty, which I think is a bit of a drawback. They're compatible both with the AM5 platform and also the Intel CPUs. And one of the things I really like is the attention to detail. So you've got the, the evaporation proof tubing. The fact that they've got some degree of protection against that is good. Now there are more expensive ones, for instance, the MEG or MEG core liquid, the S3 60. These guys here will come with a somewhat better build quality. You've got the temperature showing on the front. They are, I would say, better overall in terms of build quality. A longer warranty, five years, I think is standard warranty uh, on these ones, but they're not the ones that I would recommend at this particular price point. So my next recommendation is the NZXT, NZXT, Kraken X73. This one is the RGB one. It comes in with, comes with a lot of bling bling. <laughs> you've got bling bling on the fans. You've got a little bit of bling bling on the CPU head itself. Now, these guys coming in at $199, the price is generally speaking fairly consistent. So you typically don't find them uh, reduced in price at uh, different times of the year. They do come with these beautiful colors and you also get a chance to choose black or white. So you can do a little bit of color coordination with these ones. They have what's known as a rotating infinity mirror design. So you probably want to know what that looks like. Now these come with a six year warranty. Uh, that's perhaps the industry leading warranty. Perhaps the kind of thing that you would actually want if you are getting something like the like the 7950X or one of the more powerful CPUs for a longer term build. There is a non RGB variant. So we've got this guy here. It has got a bit of bling bling on the CPU head, but we, we've got the rotating infinity <laughs> mirror design there as well, but not so much of the bling bling on the fans, which you know you may or may not be a fan of. They do 
do have the same kind of uh, attention to build. So the build quality is pretty good. We can take a look at this. Uh, we've got the fine nylon mesh sleeves. So the build quality is a factor, obviously in the price and also in the durability. Another design feature I would say is the, is the RGB fans. Now you don't have to go with RGB obviously, but the perhaps the claim to fame for the Kraken series is the amount of noise. They have a reputation for being very quiet and that's the claim to fame for the Kraken 360 coolers. There is a Z or Z variant and this guy comes with, uh, you've got the temperature there. It is quite a lot more expensive so probably that one is for the hardcore enthusiasts. Now the next recommendation and also my top recommendation is the Be Quiet Dark Rock Pro 4. It's a hunk of metal. It's a hunk of heavy metal. 250 watt TDP and at over 90, 90, nearly $90 and over a kilogram in weight. This is currently the best selling CPU cooler on Amazon. And I think the 250 watt TDP probably plays a role in that. I think that keyword in the title probably has something to do with the popularity right now. We know that the AM5 socket is capable of supporting a 230 watt overclock and buyers are probably purchasing these to prepare for the arrival of the Ryzen 7000 CPUs. Now Be Quiet is a German company, so you've got that German engineering and they give you an American level of customer service. And uh, that's a good thing if you're in any doubt. The Dark Rock Pro 4 has got a partner, which is the Dark Rock 4. So no pro, but otherwise uh, the, the same title. Now this one is capable, of, it has a 200 watt TDP. So it's capable like the Dark Rock Pro 4 of supporting the entire Ryzen lineup, the Ryzen 7000 lineup, but you won't be able to get the most extreme overclocking performance with the uh, Dark Rock 4 as you would be able to with the uh, Dark Rock Pro 4. The main advantage of air coolers is that they are entirely encased within the PC case and that can produce superior acoustics compared to the liquid coolers. So with the liquid coolers, there's always uh, an interface between the fans and the, in the external environment. This will produce more noticeable noise, especially if you have the PC case really, really close to you whilst working. Now the liquid coolers tend to be less durable generally and very, very occasionally they leak with perhaps nasty consequences. That's very occasional though. Uh, the other benefit is that they, you can easily, easily access the memory when you need to upgrade the memory or if you have uh, to RMA the memory. Now there is a, another dark rock, which is the dark rock slim. This one is your friend if you Maybe if you are looking to undervolt your system rather than overclocking it, but it does compensate for the more limited 180 uh, watt TDP with much, much better memory access than you would get with the typical air cooler of this sort of quality. Now, the ones that we've looked at before the Dark Rock Slim probably would be fine with your 7950X and your 7900X. The Dark Rock Slim, I, I'm going to recommend that maybe for you if you're really keen on undervolting. It is 180 watt TDP, but this is going to get fairly, uh, f fairly noisy at that sort of pressure. So probably more for the 7700X and the 7600X. And also a very quick shout out to the NZXT Kraken X63 280 millimeter. This guy here might fit in some cases where you've got the capacity to hold a 280 millimeter uh, cooler. However, there is also a 240 millimeter cooler here. I wouldn't recommend these again for the two most powerful, the 7900X and the 7950X. You'd probably, they would work with those, but you'd begin to get temperatures, high temperatures. And also in the best sellers list of CPU coolers, I noticed this not to a low profile CPU cooler. It is the best selling one. This guy here is kind of okay for something like maybe, it's kind of okay maybe for something like a 5700X, but not necessarily recommended for the new generation, as good a cooler as it may be. 
Now I have a very brief update to some of the information in the DDR5 memory video that I made a couple of days ago. This is videocards.com. They have a story here from a little while back and in here they say it is alleged that DDR5 6000 should offer the best performance supposedly in one-to-one -one ratio with Infinity Fabric. So that's more or less what I was saying in the previous video uh, and any faster memory module will likely require this ratio to be changed to one to two. Now this is part of a somewhat longer story which goes initially started with uh, a tweet from a guy called uh, Yuri Bubli, uh, one Uzmas on Twitter, fairly reliable individual uh, in providing information. This information comes from an early sample motherboard, not the retail motherboards we're going to be getting uh, in September, but uh, an early one which was probably for testing. An update here is that there's a reported conversation on Discord, I think AMD's Discord, where Robert Halleck, the AMD technical marketing manager mentions some details about the overclocking for memory and the, the, the sentient sentient the um, salient point here is that uh, he mentions that the RAM OC is a little different because one to one to one mode that's the infinity fabric clock the controller clock the memory clock is not important anymore and he also mentions that the default the, the, the recommended is auto for the fabric so leave it on auto it will find its own level the controller and the memory clock, those can be set to a one-to-one -one ratio. And then he says, there are some corner cases where you can get slightly better results if your sample will do 2000, greater than 2000 fabric clock. But he says it's not a big priority. So if this conversation is accurate, it gives us an indication of something quite surprising, which is that the default fabric clock, which here is, 1733, which is not that much higher than the fabric clocks in uh, Ryzen 5000. 1733 is exactly one third of 5200, the mega transfer rate, which is the top mega transfer rate. So I imagine this actually relates to that. Now, if you watch my previous video, you remember that I mentioned that in the previous generation, we were generally speaking limited to a memory clock that was coupled to the fabric clock at one to one. Now, it was said that if you went and decoupled the memory and the fabric, you could double the clock speed of the fabric to a one to one ratio with the mega transfer rate or the transfer rate. So that some people managed that and got amazing results. Let's go ahead and see what happens when you enable the memory overclock. We go to memory, we include it, then we uh, ensure that we can decouple the infinity from the memory. We could increase the infinity fabric. See how it goes all the way up to 4,000. So you could try to get a one-to-one -one fabric to transfer rate all the way up to 4,000. Now that combination, generally speaking, would lead to your PC not starting up. So you'd have to reset the PC. Now back in the original story, the tweet does mention that the maximum Infinity Fabric clock for Ryzen 7000, the motherboards that are going uh, to testers, was 3000 megahertz. However, this is less than the clock. This is less than the frequency that we saw on the previous generation. And this means you wouldn't even be able to try to overclock above 3000. Now, some people were able to get overclocks on Ryzen 5000, where the overclock for the Infinity Fabric would be, say, about 3600. Uh, and pairing that with uh, a transfer rate of 3600 would give an enormous boost in performance. But if this limit carries on to the retail motherboards, we're going to be stuck with the 3000 limit. And that seems a little bit weird, particularly given that we are now seeing these very powerful uh, extreme motherboards, the E motherboards, which can cost up to over a thousand dollars, but you won't be able to try to get that golden overclock where you pair the infinity fabric with the transfer rate. And it does seem to me a very strange direction that AMD is moving in with more powerful overclocking boards, but maybe more limitations on the frequency for the Infinity Fabric. However, this is something that may be changed when, changed when we see the retail motherboards coming out later on this year. Perhaps when they come up with an update to the Agisa, they'll have a new BIOS 
which allows you to really experiment. And I think even if it's very, very rare, a chance in a million, a chance in a zillion, that you could get that pairing, that one-to-one -one, uh, ratio, even if it's a very rare uh, event, I still think it'll be a nice thing if you could try it, uh, if there's even a very slim chance of it working. And speaking of memory and overclocking, it, it actually seems now that the Expo memory for AMD might actually about be about the same cost as the XMP memory from uh, for, for, for Intel. And that's significant. We're seeing this in Japan, but if it's correct for Japan, maybe we're going to see that the Expo memory is not too expensive when it comes over here. So that's pretty encouraging news. And another update, in the previous memory video, I mentioned uh, my interpretation of these strange hieroglyphs that we see for the 7700 uh, X CPU and higher CPUs. These strange hieroglyphs in the connectivity where we're seeing these uh, very, <laughs> what do they mean, numbers. And there was actually, my interpretation was that this was one channel, two channel. However, there was a different interpretation and I wanna give you this, this might be very important. Uh, a guy over on Twitter, uh, his interpretation is that the DDR5 support will drop to 3600 mega transfers when using more than one DIMM per channel. Now this is very significant because if this interpretation is correct, and I think it might well be, you would have to make a different set of decisions when purchasing your, your RAM. You, you'd have to figure out how many RAM sticks you'd need to get in order to get the very best performance. So let me explain why I think this might actually be the correct interpretation. Now, if we go back to the previous generation, the Ryzen 7 5700X, we can see that it has a similar set of hieroglyphs to the newer generation. And here we see a number four, which indicates, it can't indicate the number of memory channels. So it has to indicate something more like the DIMM. And this is telling us if the interpretation of the previous gentleman is correct, it is telling us two RAM sticks, two RAM sticks, four RAM sticks, lower speed, four RAM sticks, much lower speed. That I think might be the correct interpretation. And it's not that surprising that AMD don't go around kind of like standing on top of a hill and telling us that sometimes their memory might not run at the top advertised speed. It may run at a significantly lower speed. But I think it is nice to see these things and to talk about exactly what they might mean. And how on earth would you get to 128 gigs without losing performance if you need to do it with two sticks? Remember for the for the 7700X uh, and these higher ones, we do have this limitation where any two sticks uh, in, in, in the same channel apparently will give you the lower performance. So it, it does maybe give an incentive for some of the memory manufacturers to start producing the 64 gig kits if that's what it's going to take to get to 128 gigs without losing performance. So that one I think was a very important one and I wanted to update you guys on that because I think it could have a real bearing on the sort of decisions you're making when you're buying your memory kits.